Today I'm gonna to go over how to allow users to access Google APIs, any Google API, um, after they log in with Bubble. So the user logs in with Bubble, and then at a certain point in the app, whenever you want, they can um, get access to their Google Calendar, for example, or their Gmail or YouTube. Um, and then I will go over also how to maintain that access so when the user logs out and logs back in, they still have access to those APIs. So let's quickly go over how this looks from the Google perspective, and then I'll dive, dive in to Bubble and the console. So over here, we have your app, okay? This is your idea. Um, and you, this is after they log in with Bubble. So this is not log in with Google. This is just get access to like Google Calendar, etc. cetera. Um, so essentially your app says, okay, um, I want this user to get access to Google Calendar, okay? And then, so it takes them to this page. Um, so it's just literally going to a URL um, where you specify what access you'd like. And then the user basically says, okay, this is me, you know, here's my login, etc. cetera. Um, and I authorize this app to access my Google Calendar. Then the app goes back to your app um, with an authorization code and says, okay, this user allowed us um, to give you access to the Google Calendar, and this is gonna sit in the URL. And then we're gonna go and create a separate API call and basically say, okay, I wanna get rid, of, that code is great, but I need a token where I can actually call the Google Calendar API because this code isn't working. Um, so I'm gonna exchange that code for a token. Um, so you call the Google servers and say, okay, give me a token. And then they send you back a token, a refresh URL and expiry for that token, um, a refresh code. Um, so essentially the token has an expiration. You can only call the Google API for an hour um, and then it's expired. You can't use that token anymore. So they send you a refresh token where you can call and get another access token. Um, so if you confuse access token, literally allows you to make the call to Google Calendar. Refresh token allows you to get new access tokens when they expire. Um, so then you get that token, and then you use that token to call the Google API, and that would be Google Calendar, etc. So let's jump in to your Google co console and see how this works. Okay, so now I'm on the Google console, and the first thing I wanna do is I wanna click on the top here, obviously log in. Um, manual whatever project is here and click new project and let's call this manual auth calendar API. Cool. All right. You don't need to add an organization. You can just create it and you can see that your projects is being created here. Um, then you can click on it or back here calendar API. Okay. Click on it to actually be on the correct project. And the next thing you have to do is actually configure a consent screen. This is essentially the screen that they will see. Just click external, if it's an external facing app, click your app name, uh, test app, and then support email, just you can put in an email. You can skip all this for now, but if you were creating in when you're ready to launch your app, um, you'll have to fill that out. And then click save and continue. Cool, now let's add and remove scopes. Oh, one thing I didn't add yet, um, which we'll do right after, is enable API and services. So over here, this is where you specify exactly what this app can access. In our case, we want to access the calendar. Um, since we didn't enable it, it's not showing up. Um, so we're gonna click enable API and services, click enable API and services, and we will choose calendar. Enable, awesome. Taking the beat, cool. Okay, go back to credentials, um, go out with consent screen, and let's click edit. Okay, it's taking us back. We'll save and continue back to where we were. Okay, now we can add and remove scopes. And here we can choose calendar. And over here we have a bunch of scopes we can access. Some of them are read only. That means you can only like see events, but you couldn't edit them. In this case, we're just gonna choose the most flexible one, which is see, edit, share, and permanently delete. Um, we can see that it shows up here, and that is a sensitive scope. 
Okay, then you can click save and continue and add users. So because we're using a test app and it's not verified yet by Google, you need to add exactly who can access it during the testing phase. Awesome, then you can click save and continue and we are done with the um, OAuth screen. Then we can click on credentials, add credentials, OAuth client ID, application type this is a web app if you're using bubble. Um, web app one, doesn't matter, call it what you want. The main thing here is the authorized redirect URL. So this is essentially when we go back to that authorization flow that's where it takes the users after they log in. So you may be used to using the standard um, auth redirect that Bubble gives you. That won't work for this. You need to specify exactly what URL you want to take the user to after they authorize, you know, Google to access, like they authorize the app to access, for example, the Google, the calendar API. Um, so specify a specific URL. Um, essentially where you want to land um, after they authenticate with Google. Um, so I'll add that, perfect. Then I clicked create at the bottom. Um, I may have missed that, but I just pasted it in and click create. And then I see these OAuth clients uh, created and I can see I have an ID and a secret and okay, I'm just gonna click okay. And now we can see that we have that over here. And when we click into it, we can see that we have a client ID and client secret. All right, let's jump in to the Bubble app and see how. So what I have here is I have three groups. Um, one is the login sign up group. This is a Bubble related group. So if I click sign up, I'm literally signing the user up with Bubble and using a random password. The next one is, is allowing users to access Google Calendar. Um, so this is where it actually gets interesting and I'm going to use the documentation actually to help explain how that works. So the user is going to sign up with Bubble and then request access for the um, calendar API. Okay, so now I'm on the Google, um, essentially, I'm going to link to this in the description, but this is essentially the official documentation for how to do this and I'm on step one. And so here we can see we're going to the Google account to this website, um, accessible over HTTPS, okay. Um, not really interesting to us. The main thing here is we're just gonna go to a website. So this isn't an API call, it's literally opening a website where I'm gonna put this base and then I'm gonna put all these as URL parameters. Um, so <clears throat> we, you can go over each one here and just read and see why they're important. I can quickly go over them, like client ID, that's what we got over here, that's the client ID we were looking at. The redirect URL, that's what we specified. You need to remember that and it has to match exactly what you put in in your Google console. The response type, um, it returns an authorization code, um, so this the parameter is set to code. And then the scope is what we're accessing. We're accessing the Google Calendar in our case. Um, and then the access type, we're gonna do offline. Um, so the reason we do offline, that basically allows you to have a refresh token where you can get access codes or access tokens when the user is logged out. So it's not like every time they log in with Bubble, for example, or every time they wanna access their Google Calendar, they have to re, re, redo the authentication process. Um, we can do it for them. And then the state, that's just a, parameter that you can send uh, if you need it for your app. So it just stays consistent throughout the whole process. Um, not really important. These are optional. I'll just leave these for now. Let's jump into Bubble and see how this works. So when I click access Google Calendar, um, I'm opening an external website and you can see that I just literally built the URL exactly how they have it in the documentation. And I added all these as URL parameters. Um, so we have that accounts.google authentication then we have the client ID. We have a question mark here. That's just how URLs work. Um, you have a client ID equals, and then I just pasted in a client ID. It's not the same client ID, and these will all be deleted, so don't try to hack my account. Um, <clears throat> a redirect URL. Um, so that's essentially the exact URL that I specified. The response type. 
and then you have an at in between each parameter. The response type equals code, so that's like literally what it is. And then at scope, and that equals Google API's auth calendar. <clears throat> So if you need to find a scope for a specific API, like just Google it and be like, oh, what's the scope for you know Google Analytics, etc. Um, and then at access type equals offline, um, and then state and prompt. You don't worry about those. The main ones is everything up here. <clears throat> cool. And then once that open that external URL, um, I will actually show you how that looks on the So I'm going to quickly just sign up with bubble, it's bubbler at gmail.com, cool, sign up. And then I'm going to access Google Calendar. Ignore this for now, um, you'll see why. Um, and actually I will clear out this URL for us, okay. Let's access Google Calendar and I'm just literally opening that URL that I just showed you and it takes me to this page where I actually need to authenticate. Um, with Google. And so when I click Wise Bubbler, I can see, okay, this app hasn't been verified, okay, and then I can see what I'm allowing access um, for this, what, what I'm allowing this app to access. And when I click continue, it takes me back to this page, but I can see here the URL is completely different and I have this code in the URL. Um, and that's the code I was talking about. So it's not sending it back in any way, it's just showing it in the URL and it's showing all a bunch of other information you specified. But we're gonna use this to get the access token. So let's go back to the editor and see how that looks. Um, so now that we had that code, after I click this um, in the URL, I'm actually saving that code in this group. Um, so I'm getting code from the URL. So when you saw that code before, that was left over from a previous authentication. Um, and I'm just, if you don't know how to get things from a URL on Bubble, I recommend you check out the bubble docs, um, but hopefully you do. I'm just literally getting that code. And now I'm gonna use it to get the authorization token. So let's go into the workflows and see what I did here. Um, so the next thing I did is I <clears throat> did a do when condition is true. So that's like a workflow, like do when condition is true. And when condition is true, when group codes text is not empty. So when we have that code in the URL, I'm gonna run this API workflow. That's just gonna be get authorization code. So then I need that authorization code to actually call the Google Calendar API. Um, and then I'm gonna make changes to current user. And what I'm gonna get back from that authorization code call is I'm gonna get a refresh token, okay? That allows us to refresh this access token. I'm gonna get an access token and I'm gonna get an expires in. Now the expires in format is in seconds. So the way I'm gonna save it is as a date, and I'm gonna do current date and time plus seconds equals result of step one expires in, and that'll tell me exactly what date it, this access token expires. Cool, so now that we have that, I can actually, now that I have the access token, I can actually get the Google Calendar invites, and I'm just gonna show you how this looks um, on the back end is I have an API call that just gets the Google Calendar API, uh, the Google Calendar events and it's a data call and here I have <clears throat> like I'm calling getting data from an external API so let me just show you so looks get data from external API Google manual auth Google Calendar and then I specify the calendar ID I want and then the bearer token the authorization is actually gonna be that access token. So it's gonna be <coughs> current users access token. And don't worry about the calendar ID for now. That's usually just the email, but in other videos, I'll show you specifically how that works. Then I'm gonna get the items. So when we look at our bubble app, we can see that we have my calendar events from my Google Calendar over here. Um, so let's go into those API calls and see how those work. Um, so get authorization code that we're using, we're exchanging that code we got in the URL for an access token. So we can actually call the Google Calendar API and that's gonna be get authorization code. It's gonna be a post request. It's gonna be an action. It's just gonna be this endpoint, very simple endpoint. What we're sending there is the client ID. Um, so that's our client ID. Um, this is an old one, so I won't 
match exactly. Um, and the next thing we're sending is the client secret. That'll go here. And the other thing we're sending is that code from the URL. So remember, I've been talking about this code for a, lot, a while, but that code in the URL is what we're sending to get this access token. And the next thing we're getting is this, we're sending authorization code, that's the grant type. We're telling them, okay, we're sending you a code, give us back an access token. And then the read correct URL is basically, it has to be the exact same one you put in your console, Google console account. Okay, so that's, we get the access token. And the next call was, um, I'm gonna pause on skip up on this one, is the Google Calendar call. This is a call um, on the Google Calendar API. It's just a basic regular call um, that you would do. Um, and then the calendar ID, just specifically for Google Calendar, it's like you have to put in the email or there's an ID for each calendar. I won't go too deeply into that. <clears throat> and then the authorization over here is gonna be that access token we got from that first call. Um, so that's essentially how I got those calendar events. The last thing is, is okay, when that, when that access token expires, we have this other call where we can refresh that access token. Um, so this is the refresh access token. It's actually the same endpoint as this one. You can see here, it's Google OAuth 2googleapi slash token. Um, and here it's the same thing. Um, and I'm also adding in the same thing here, the client ID and client secret. The difference is, the only difference is, is the code and grant type. So in this case, <coughs> the grant type is refresh token. And instead of sending a code, we're sending a refresh token and it'll give us a new access token. In your app, you can specify exactly where you, when you want those refreshes to happen, um, how you wanna save them, um, when you want, like, you don't want to send that route, you don't want to get a new access token every hour, um, but you may want to do it, you know, right when the user logs in, you may want to check every time if their access token is still valid um, when they go on the page, um, you can figure that out. But hopefully this gives a good overview about how that authorization flow works between Google and your bubble app and then like the Google APIs. Um, if you like this video, definitely hit the thumbs up. And if you want access to my bubble editor, I have always a paid link in my description where you can buy access. Um, and lastly, in the comments, in the first comment, I'm gonna have this, I have this like little app where you can suggest videos um, for me. Um, my next video is going to be actually doing the login with Google with the refresh tokens in my previous video um, one of the biggest issues was that the refresh tokens don't work when you use bubbles user agent flow um, so you, the login with google if you want to like add in google calendar won't work w using bubbles native uh, functionality so it's basically going to be like this with a bunch of other security measures and workarounds um, so stick around for that and yeah, feel free to suggest new videos and as always, thank you so much for watching your support like means the world to me.